Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday Night Rotor Talk Live, Season 2, Episode 10, Drone Parachute Recovery Systems. How is everyone doing this evening? Hope everybody had a great Tuesday. Work went pretty well for me. Uh, family Attack, welcome. Drone Master, uh, Jet Front 25 7 from Montreal, Canada. Lloyd, welcome. Drone Worship Revolution, glad you're here tonight. Better with a drone. Um, Artco, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Okay, well, we're going to be talking tonight. Have no guests. Um, we're going to be talking about drone parachute recovery systems tonight. Now, I'm um, going to be playing three clips coming up here. Uh, I did a video last year on drone parachute recovery systems. I don't know how many of you had a chance to see that. But uh, what we're going to look at, you, know, um, you probably, David Ma, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, Gleisberg Heating and Cooling, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, you guys probably saw um, Kelly Shores did a video on the Para Zero recovery system, and Billy Kyle did a video on the Para Zero recovery system. And I, I was able to watch both of their videos. Peter, welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining tonight. Well, I watched both their videos, and of course, Billy's drone's already damaged, so and uh, didn't look like there was any uh, new damage to it. However, um, the drone that was used in Kelly's video was his friend uh, Phil or Phillips uh, drone, and it did look like it did have some damage. So um, we're going to take a look at some clips here coming up here in, in just a minute. Uh, oh, uh, Pepito, welcome from Australia. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, gonna going to look at a few clips coming up here. Um, got, uh, some, got some interesting ones here. So if you bear with me here for just a second. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, get these so where you guys can go ahead and watch them. Um, going to have two clips coming up. Um, Peter Carroll, welcome. Drone Shots, welcome. Uh, the Beard and Hammer, welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Mitch, welcome. Um, I got a couple clips from Para Zero, and I got a couple clips from Indemnus. Now, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be playing them here in order. So hang in there. I'm going to turn the volume up so you guys can hear it. So bear with me here for just a minute. Drones crash all the time. Why? It could be the result of human error, weather conditions, or even motor failure. But no matter the reason, it's going to cost you time and it's going to cost you money. But don't worry, I've got a solution for you. Meet SafeAir, the best parachute system for your drone. Parazero SafeAir is easy to install, and the system's weight barely impacts the drone's flight ability. The SafeAir system can detect critical failures and deploy autonomously and does not rely on the drone systems. The autonomous system allows a soft landing to protect the people and property below and the drone itself. In addition to all these benefits, using the SafeAir system may allow you to get extended operational approval from authorities as well as discounted insurance policies. And don't worry, you don't need to buy a new one every time. SafeAir, it just works. Okay, now that was um, that that was the Para Zero system for the Phantom Four. Now we're going to take a look at the Para's, Para Zero system for the M two hundred. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, we have very good deployment. Okay, now after the drone has landed, we're going to approach and examine to see if there's any damage to the drone. We're going to also check that the payload is working. Right now we're going to disconnect the parachute and then we're going to disconnect the terminator just so we can put the batteries back in quickly and go up in the air as fast as possible. Okay, so you can see both batteries are in place. Um, it seems there's no damage to the drone, a little fracture on the leg, but that's fine. Um, everything seems to be in order. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and look at, um, this is a part of 
from a clip that I had done last year on drone parachute recovery systems, and it's on the Indemnus Nexus system. This is for the Inspire 2. Skycap. The third drone recovery system is Indemnus Nexus. Here's a demo from the Roswell flight test crew. Roswell Flight Test Crew here at AUVSI Exponential 2017, and I'm here with Zach Cotty from Indemnus, and you guys have worked out some sort of a parachute system for drones, but we've seen these before. What sets you guys apart? So we detect our parachute as it's coming out from our uh, mechanism, and we shoot it out at about 90 miles an hour to escape the tumble and roll scenario of, a, of an aircraft. We've actually experienced up to 300 RPM rolls in testing, and we've been able to escape those every time. Well, that's impressive. So how does how does the parachute know to go off? So we have our onboard software system, which is autonomous, and it will detect a failure of a drone within six feet of it falling. And it measures the flight characteristics of the airframe and continuously compares itself to that on a sub-second level. And if it ever finds itself out of the flight envelope, it knows to trigger. Wow. But is there a way the pilot can manually trigger it if they're seeing something they don't like and they think the parachute's better than whatever my other option is? Correct. If, uh, if he needs a ditch for some reason, then yes, there'll be a manual trigger. Okay. Now I'm going to play this clip from Indemnus here. Now I'm going to throw up on the screen here and take a look and see for the Phantom, it's $299. This is the pair zero system. For the M600 Matrice, it's $2,500. And for the M200 Matrice, it's $2,500. So um, thanks for indulging me there for a few minutes with this. Um, it's really, um, oh, um, Ascar Studios, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Kevin Portner, welcome. Um, Jeffrey, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, and better with a drone. Uh, you can take a look. Now, these are not inexpensive options here, okay? And that's one. That's the first thing that I wanted to get across. The other thing is, you know, and Kelly stated this today or whenever he did the video, this is something you shouldn't go out and do. I mean, um, you know, they were willing to test this, and, and evidently Billy was too. Um, the, notice where they did them. They did them in a big open field. No one was around. Um, you know, there was more than one person there. Uh, and, and that's paramount for something like this whenever you, whenever this is done. This is not something you want to go out and do because if you look at Phil or Phillips' drone, um, Phantom 4, it looked like it did receive some damage. So, you know, you really kind of have a, a guinea pig scenario, uh, so to speak. So, um, Jala Alf, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Sorry if I botched name. Drive by, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up tonight was, you know, this is something, you know, this is done. It's a twofold purpose. All right. It's to, it, it will definitely slow your drone down. But, and that's the, and that's the thing that I've seen with all the systems except for the Nexus. Okay. It slows your drone down, but it does have a pretty good impact on the ground. I think um, I, I saw, I don't know if it was in Billy's video or in Kelly's video, it, it's at about 11 or 12 mile per hour impact when it, when it hits the ground. And, you know, it's still enough to cause some damage. Now, the Indemnus Nexus one, now that's, they the prices, it isn't actually out yet. It's going to be about, last I saw was about $1,700. You know, which again, you know, if you're getting an airframe like a uh, like an Inspire Two, and you and you're you're spending, you know, what upwards of ten thousand dollars plus, uh, you know, that's kind of a small price to pay. Now, I do know Indemnis has 
a um, warranty on it and not only warning on that, but on your drone as well too. So, and that's something, you know, I'll post, I'm going to be posting links to all this in the description. So you guys can check that out. But I think one of the things that that's really important here is, you know, these systems and especially ParaZero talks about being able to do a waiver with this and getting a waiver to fly over crowds. And I think this is huge. This is important. And I think it's, I think it's a step in the right direction. However, I think as fast as I've seen those drones come down in these videos, I don't think these are ready to be able to use to fly over Idaho Sledhead. Marcus, welcome. Thanks for joining. Ron Brown, I did see you in earlier. Thanks for joining as well. Uh, you know, that's one of the things. I just don't think these are ready yet. I don't think the, these are ready. I think they're good for use in, you know, if you're using it um, personally. I think it's good if you're using it maybe commercially. But as far as getting a waiver to fly over crowds, I don't think they're ready yet. Uh, I really don't think they're ready yet. I think that's something that, um, you know, I think they're working on. You know, if you look at, you know, the... Now, the nice thing about the Para Zero system is that it can be repacked and reused over and over and over again. Now, I do know that the Indemnus Nexus system, that has to be sent back to them and they'll repack it for you for free. Now, that shoots out, I believe it, it uses carbon dioxide to shoot that out. Um, and it does use intelligent software. And the nice thing about that is, is no matter what position the Inspire 2 was in, it, it, it gets it it gets that shoot out there and it gets it out there pretty quickly I think that's another thing with that indemnity system it gets that out there it gets that out there quickly now you know the para zero systems are performing exactly as they should exactly as they have been designed and you know it does have some great features you know being able to repack it I think one of the things that they could probably work on is possibly getting a system together with um, you know, having having one with a wider parachute to slow the descent down even more. Um, you know, if they could cut that in half from like, you know, 12 or 11 miles an hour to maybe about six, you know, that's not going to cause, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, the damage that it would at 12 miles an hour. Let me put it to you that way. Um, oh, welcome, Joe. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, so, you know, all in all, I think, you know, they're, they're getting there. Th this is something that they're working on. But I think, you know, I, I think we still need, we still haven't really seen the, the finished product. Now, I did review a couple of other ones in my video from last year, Mars Parachute Systems, and it's an acronym, and forgive me, I don't remember what it stands for. And the other one, this is a fun, fru Fruity Shoots, F-R-U-I-T-Y, Fruity Shoots, okay? Um, uh, Boston Droner, welcome. Uh, thanks for, thanks for sh showing up tonight. Um, so... And I'll, and I'll post a link to that video. Now, I did I did do this. Um, you know, this was before they even became popular and before Para Zero started making a name for itself. So, uh, you know, kudos to them for getting out a great product. It looks good. I think it's one where it's going to need some work. I, 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 th that's just my personal opinion right now. And they're very soon going to be coming out with one with the Mavic 2 Pro, which, which I think is great. Now... I've yet to find out to see how much of a difference that's going to make in terms of, of an insurance policy. You know, is this going to, you know, reduce your insurance? Now, I pay $75 a year for my Mavic 2 Pro as far as insurance is concerned to State Farm. And, you know, and it's full. I have full coverage on it, which is great. Now, it's full replacement coverage. And, you know, understand that there is a difference, you know, that is not liability insurance. This is this is strictly, you know, a catastrophic loss um, in terms of in terms of losing the drone. Either, you know, a, an act of God, I think, is how it's worded in the um, in, in the policy. So, um, but that's where things are with that. Thanks for indulging me for a few minutes and playing some of those clips. I thought it was important for you guys to see that in that there are different types of systems. Um, you know as far as they go. Now, this Mars system that I looked at, it was spring loaded. And I thought it took too long to come out. And this fruity shoots, I thought they were good, but I didn't. I, again, you know, it was it was kind of slow to react whenever the motors would get shut down. So you know, as far as far as that's concerned, um, MD Jonah, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight, Scott. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming in. Um, 
you know, so th this is where we're. This is where I, I think things are. I, I think we. I think we need still need to see some improvement on this. Um, it's a step in the right direction. Um, yeah, you know what, Eli? I think you're right. They, you know, ha having a catastrophic shutdown um, as far as what, you know, either, you know, the only way that I see these kind of scenarios coming coming to fruition is if, let's say that, you know, maybe a bird strike or maybe, you know, your battery's gone or there's, you know, some kind of malfunction, but those things don't happen that often. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, it's Eli, that's a good, that's a good point that you raise. The chance of a drone falling out of the sky is probably same likeliness as a parachute falling off the drone in flight. Cool product, not realistic. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're, you're kind of right in terms of, in terms of the realism factor. You know, it's not how many times, you know, have you heard of a drone just stopping dead? I mean, it does happen, but it's not, it's not as often as you think it's, it's kind of a nice insurance policy. I agree, but I think in order to get it to where, you know, it's going to come down and have a somewhat softer landing instead of coming down a lot faster. I mean, you know, like you saw in, in Kelly's video with, with Phil or Phillips, drone, you know, it did suffer some damage. You know, the, those, those gear are out there and they're, and they're exposed. And, you know, if you're familiar with the gear on the Phantom 4, you know, I believe one of them has the compass in there. So, um, or, or part of the GPS system. So, you know, it makes a difference and, you know, the slower that you can get this, the better. Now, the, the one thing that I do like about the Para Zero system that I haven't noticed with the other ones, it re it has, it, it's audible. So, you know, if this is over a crowd, say you're doing this, you know, it can alert people that there's something coming down out of the sky. I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, but you know, not everybody could be able to get out of the way. You don't, you don't know that as far as that's concerned. Um, the lid detaches and if you cannot retrieve your, you're right, Joe. That that's a very that's a very good point. You know, I did see. You know, Billy was able to find a lid, and I think Phil, Philip, and um, Kelly they found theirs as well. But if you don't find that lid for the pair of zero, you know, <laughs> you got to spend another two hundred and ninety nine dollars and get it, get another one. I mean, you know, granted, you know, if you think of in terms of cost, and this is this is kind of the same thing. You know, oh, I'm going to spend over $150 to get a case for my $1,500 drone, and you know, I think that's expensive. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people are like that, and I agree. You know, it, it is it, it is a big price to pay, but if you remember, you know, you're paying $1,500 for a Phantom 4 Pro or Pro V 2.0. Um, you know, you're paying $1,500 for a Mavic 2 Pro. You know, you want to have some good protection as far as a case is concerned, especially especially if it's an everyday kind of case. You know, if it's if it's something um, or, or if it's a case, you know, you're going to be out in the environments and exposed to a lot of stuff. So I think it's important to have a great case. And, you know, I'll gladly spend that $150 to protect it as far as that's concerned. Um, but no, you guys are bringing up some good points with this. And, and I think it I think it bears repeating. And definitely, you know, if you guys haven't seen Kelly or Billy's video, make sure you check them out. Um, you know, th they were good. Um, they, they did, they did some, you know, it, it was as realistic as possible and trying to shut down those engines aren't really hard trying to do that. I think you have to push, uh, I think it's the return to home button and one of the joysticks down to the right and have to hold on to that. And it's just, it's, it's not easy to do something like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, you're, um, Marcus, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons why I like that indemnity system because it's it has shown you know if it's spinning around and out of control that it will actually you know st you know no matter where it is because it it comes out that it shoots the parachute out with such force you know it it really it can it, it writes writes it no matter what position it's in of course it's pricey you know it's going to be about seventeen hundred dollars but it really does the job and, and I'm anxious to see that I'm anxious to see. How that ends up and, and and how that and how that how that pans out. So, um, you guys probably saw. You know, I hope you guys had a chance to catch um, my videos on the Mavic Two Pro at six months. Um, had some fun um, putting those clips together. You know, the first one I did was basically my ownership of the Mavic Two Pro over the first six months, and I think it was I think they it was pretty well received. But you know, I played some clips from some of my videos. 
And then the second one, it was my first attempt, and actually I think it came out pretty good, um, of doing a vlog style video. It was a lot of clips that I had filmed while we were on our way and going to the See the Bigger Picture event. Valerie was in some of them. Um, I got, you know, several, you know, Billy Kyle, Original Dobo, Rick Smith, um, Kelly Shores, Ed Ricker, a Half Chrome Jones, you know, got a, a lot of the guys in there. Had a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, and, and I think it showed. And uh, if you get a chance, make sure you guys get a chance and watch those videos. We just ha had a blast doing that. And I think I'm going to try to do some more of those coming up. Yeah, I, I do, Marcus. I, I, I do as well. Um, you know, that, you know, you know, that's kind of like a, I, I hate to say the word guinea pig or sacrificial lamb, but that's kind of, kind of what that was like. And, and also I wanted to bring up a little bit too, um, and talk about the Zeno. And I don't know if Ron's still on or not, but I know Marcus is on and it was great. It was, it's my two go-tos for videos on the Zeno are our very own Idaho sledhead, Marcus, and also Ron Brown. These guys have put in a lot of work in these videos, so definitely check their videos out. Ron just put a video out about um, uh, he did he did some of the firmware updates, and it was recommended to him. and And I forget, Ron, if you're on, if you could post the the gentleman, I forget who you said um, QC shots or something like that. I, I'm not real sure, Marcus. You may know, um, but. It was great because one of them was, Ron was saying, you know, when the Zeno would take off, it would just, boom, go right back down. And he did only two of them. You know, it was the, it was the gimbal pitch adjustment. And I don't know, I don't know what the, what the name of that one was, but it was such a difference seeing that because I've watched all of Ron's and, I, and I've watched Marcus's videos too. And if you get a chance, watch Marcus's latest video because he, the one that he did was, it was, you know, I can't, Marcus, that was fantastic that you did. It was on a very windy day up there. And, you know, the stability uh, of the Xeno really impressed me with how, um, with how, with how well it, it withstood those winds. I know that those were, those were pretty good winds, you know, and I know like the Mavic 2 Pro, um, you know, if it gets over 20, 25 miles an hour, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, I'm hearing those engines are really gunning and trying to keep its position. Um, yours, yours did. I was very impressed with that. That was, that was a great video. So if you guys get a chance to check out those videos on the Zeno from, um, from Marcus Idaho Sledhead and from Ron Brown, these guys really put a lot of effort into it. Um, yes, they have Marcus. And, and I'm so, I'm so happy to see that. I, you know, I think Hubson's kind of, um, you know, realize, you know, that they may have something here with a 4k drone, you know, and I, I don't, I, for, you know, Marcus, maybe you you know, I not sure if it's it's um, Banggood or who has it for two ninety nine. I know it's not two ninety nine on Amazon, but um, two hundred and ninety nine. Oh well, that better with a drone. That's great to hear. I hope I hope you have some good luck on that. Now I did see Brian Singleton's review on the his unboxing and his review on the um, on the Zeno as well too. And I love Brian. Um, he true drone reviews. Brian, if you're on tonight, welcome. Um, I love Brian because Brian is a hundred percent honest and, you know, he didn't pull any punches on it. And, and I like that as well too. It's always good. And, and that's one thing that I like about him is he gives you the straight scoop. He doesn't cover it up. He doesn't, doesn't, you know, candy coat it at all. And, and that's what I like him. So if you get a chance also watch true drone reviews, that's Brian Singleton. Um, you may have seen him on, um, you know, drone therapy, bucket list boys with, uh, Bill Thomas, Ron Brown, and myself. And also, here's a commercial, paid commercial announcement, not a un, unpaid commercial commercial announcement. Tomorrow night, there will be no bucket list, boys. Um, Bill's going on a mini vacation, um, and that's I'm real happy for him with that. And it will be on March the 20th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Look for the bucket list, boys, to come back on. So that's a promo for our next broadcast. I I don't know what we're supposed to be talking about, but as you know, we have a lot of fun and I have a lot of fun with Ron and Bill. Those guys are great. And definitely, you know, check out Ron's channel. Ron does a lot of great reviews. Um, he did one on the Potensic, um, which is a very small uh, mini indoor drone, which was great. 
Um, you know, and he's been keeping up on the Zeno, which is fantastic. Ethan, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, yeah, and definitely, um, you know, uh, you know, check out Bill's, you know, coast to coast drones, um, you know, drone therapy bucket list boys. Bill is, I think, one of the number one cheerleaders for drones. Um, you know, I, I think if I'm wrong, I don't know if you're watching tonight, Bill, but I don't think Bill's met a drone he didn't like really. Uh, you know, he just absolutely loves, loves it, loves the hobby, loves the, pa he's passionate about it and, and it, and it shows and it shows in everything that he does. And, um, I'm so glad to be paired up with Ron and with Bill. We have such a great time. Uh, Matthew, welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, we have a lot of fun. We absolutely positively had a lot of fun. Oh, it's back to 369. Oh, Marcus, ouch, 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 ouch. I think they're making improvements now, so they're raising the price on it. Okay, so that three sixty nine I saw I saw on Amazon is probably the low price right now. And I think I, and I did some looking on eBay with that as well. And I and I did see three sixty nine on that. I'm glad to see that Hubson is being um, responsive. You know, um, you know, you know, replacing drones, taking care of issues. And take and doing firmware updates. This is good. This is a good. This is a good thing, and, and it's good for us because you know, having a lower price point on things like this can get people into the hobby. Chris Hope, thanks for joining tonight. You know, getting people into this hobby is, is, is fantastic. And the thing, the big drawing card, of course, is price. You know, you want to have you want to have a good good entry level, and you saw. You know, DJ, I had a good entry level with the Spark. And, you know, Bill Thomas sent me a link today, and we all got excited. And Ron saw it, too. Um, it looked like a Spark on, on eBay, but then I, I read the fine print, and it said a clone. So uh, I was like, oh, man, if it wasn't a clone, I would have clicked buy it now. So at that kind of price, 150 bucks, that was that was pretty good. Um, oh, I didn't know that, Joe. I didn't know they were doing live streams. I, you know, that – that would be fantastic. And, and again, I think they're being responsive to us out here in the drone community. I think that's a really good thing. I think we we need that. We need we need we we need responsive um, companies out there. Um, you know, and I will say this. You know, Autel has been more responsive than they were before. Uh, and as you know, you're probably aware. I had an X Star Premium, and I have to tell you guys. It was solid hardware wise. That thing was rock solid. I, I had, you know, it, it was very well built. You you can t you can tell when something's well built. However, you know, the software was a real pain point for Autel. You know, those and, and if any of you have an XTAR Premium or or had one, you know that those software updates didn't take days or weeks, but it, they took months. And the last one I believe before I sold it was. Um, you know, it was a beta version. It never got to be really quote official as far as that's concerned. But they've been more responsive with the Evo. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, you know, they have been taking care of issues as they've come up. And and I think that's a that's a great thing, and that's great for Autel. And and I'm hoping that they're gonna come out with some with some good things this year. Um, as far as you know, maybe a one-inch sensor on the Evo. Who knows? Uh, you know, they did come out with some good accessories. Hopefully those will hit the market soon. That's a good thing. Um, Manny, has anyone ever used Loom Cube lights, something similar on Mavi 2 Pro to film at night? If so, what adjustments do you have to make on the camera because of the spotlights? That's a great question. If anybody can answer Manny's question, that would be great. Um, Manny, I know Kelly used some Loom Cubes on the uh, on his on his Phantom 4. All right. Yeah, it was, I think it was on his Phantom 4. So you may want to check one of his videos. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, um, Ethan Mitchell, you're right. Um, you know, my thoughts are, are with the hardware getting so good across the board. The big thing that's going to separate the competition is going to be software and software updates. You are absolutely spot on. Um, Ethan, yeah, you're right. You know, it, it's, you know, the, if, if, the, if, if companies stay on top of the software, you know, that's that's a huge point, and that's a great point. Uh, thank you for for bringing that up, Ethan. Because you know, if you stay on top of that software and address those things right away and get that back out there, that can make uh, you know that can make a lot of these issues on these drones disappear and go away. 
you know, for example, you know, one of the number one question I had asked since the Mavic 2 came out was, when are we going to get waypoints, Bill? When are waypoints coming up? And, you know, it was like, uh, I'm like, I don't know. I said, I'm, I'm, I, I look, I look at DJI support every day. And when they came out, I just, you know, it was fantastic. It, it was, and I, and I had a field day and you guys probably saw the series that I did on waypoints. I had, had a lot of fun with that. And yeah, there's still some imperfections, but it works. And, and, and that's the bottom line. They delivered something that works to us. So, um, as far as that's concerned. So, you know, Ethan, you know, that, that is just, thanks, thanks for bringing that up. And, and I think we all need to realize, you know, um, you know, I'm sure Hubson has made some great hardware with the Zeno. I'm, I'm getting very tempted, uh, Ron, I don't know if you're out there tonight and, and also Marcus, I'm getting very tempted to get one. It sounds, it sounds like it's getting better and better. And Ron said he's on the, he's on the cusp of maybe being able to give it a recommendation. So, um, you know, for, for regular, regular pilots, um, I don't know. Um, for those of us, for those of us who don't need a lot, you know, a background to be able to fly, and um, you know, kudos to Ron, kudos to Marcus and others, um, you know, Brian um, Singleton as well, you know, for taking the time out, you know, getting the Zeno, putting it through its paces, getting it tested, you know, they're the ones, you know, it's because of people like them or why drones get purchased like that, you know. Um, you know, the big names like DJI, Autel, Parrot, um, Unique, you know, they don't really need a lot of the press like Hubson does. And Hubson needs some good press with that. Now, you know, the Xiaomi um, is it Z8, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, um, is, is coming out as well. And I know Dustin has done some reviews on that. And, you know, I've seen some good. I've seen some bad with that. Um, you know, does have a higher price point. Um, you know, I know one of the things, and I know Brian Singleton talked about it with the Zeno, and and Marcus, see if you can, uh, you know, I, I'd like to get your input on this as well too. Um, you know, it doesn't have that optical flow sensor on the bottom. Um, what are your thoughts about that? If you could just just chime in on that, uh, because you know, an optical an optical sensor, I think think would help out a lot with the, um, you know, with the Zeno uh, as far as far as that's concerned. So. Um, that's just that's just my two cents worth. Um, you know, that's possible, Ethan. I don't know as far as that's concerned. You know, we did see, you know, I did just have a video on that. Um, you know, there's talk that, you know, that, you know, from uh, the Osutalev guy that, you know, that they laid off all the all the programmers and so forth. And, um, you know, so, you know, as far as far as that's concerned. We don't know yet. And then he also talked about in the same breath, you know, if they, you know, it's ready for production and if they ramp it up, it's going to have different zoom lenses and so forth. So who knows, you know, I think, and this is just, you know, on top of the video. Um, thank you, Marcus. I appreciate that. That's good. The Xeno is not nearly as refined as what we're used to with our DJI drones. Yes, it could really use some optical flow. The lack of it does affect stability. Thank you, Marcus. And I know, um, you know, I, I know Ron's Ron's talked about that as well too. So you know, th that's a that's a good point to bring up. You know, realize you know when you fly a DJI drone, you know it's you know when you take off with your Spark, it's 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 like it's just standing there and 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 you know hovering, especially if it's not windy and because of the sensors and and it and it makes a makes a big big difference. Um, oh yeah, better with the drone. To be honest, the controller upgrade is kind of scary. You have to short it out to uh, reburn the upgrade. Must follow instructions closely. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd heard about that from Ron as well too. So yeah, thank you on that. That's you know that that's that's really kind of kind of interesting. You know, it does take you know this is it, it takes a lot of love and a lot of work. You know, and I know Marcus has done that. I know Ron's done that. Um, you know, um, if you want to get it up in the air and you really are passionate about it, you'll get these things. You'll get these things taken care of. Um, you know, that, that, that's a possibility, Ethan, but for me, as far as the Phantom series is concerned, it's been their DJI's bread and butter since day one. I don't see them, you know, killing, killing the Phantom series. You know, I know a lot of people have said, you know, they're not going to do a Phantom five, you know, I don't know as far as that's concerned, but I, I tell you what, um, 
you know, that's one of the number one questions I get in my inbox every day, you know, is DJI, you know, and still even after the video came out, are they going to do one, you know, and, you know, you get a mixed bag and, you know, you know, if I'm hearing anything, they're going to do something, it would be third or fourth quarter this year, as far as that's concerned, I think, and I'm going to go with Bill Thomas, what he has said, and Ron, as you saw us a couple of weeks ago, I think I think we're going to see a Spark Pro or a Spark 2 hit before summer. That's my personal opinion. Um, Kevin, thank you for showing up tonight. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Marcus, I, I agree. Any news on X Dynamics Evolve and their removable lens system? I haven't heard anything, Manny. If anybody else has, please post that in the chat for Manny as far as, far as that's concerned. So that's where I think where we're at as far as releases are concerned. Um, you know, I, I think we'll see some additional options for the Mavic 2 Enterprise series this year. Um, and I hope you guys, if you haven't had a chance to, my um, having Romeo Dersher on, uh, DJI's Director of Public Safety Integration. Romeo, if you're watching tonight, if you watch this rebroadcast, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to come on the show. You, it was so well received. It, it was just absolutely fantastic. Um, a lot of great comments. We'd love to have you back on again sometime. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, David, nice to see you tonight. Uh, the Phantom Enterprise fills a huge hole in DJI's line. That's a drone with a minimum one-inch sensor, interchangeable lenses, longer flight time, and no rolling shutter. OcuSync with dual controls. That's a good point, David. Thank you for bringing that up, and uh, thank you for commenting tonight. I appreciate that. Um, the Phantom 4 Pro V 2.0 is out of stock, and DJI is not producing it any at the moment. You're right, Joe. Um, it's not on DJI's website and you go out to some of the big box places. Now, the only place that I have seen, I've seen them available on two places, Joe, and it's on eBay and it's also on Amazon. You can still buy it on Amazon. Those are the only two places I've seen, you know, B and H photo, um, you know, um, Best Buy, you know, none of the other, they're not there. They're, they're out of stock, but um, I have seen them. If you're looking for one, they are available on Amazon. They are available on eBay. And I have to tell you, the ones on eBay are very expensive. Um, you know, I've, I think like one of the lower prices I've seen for a new in the box one is about $1,900. And you know, as you know, they retail for about $1,500. So as far as that's concerned. Um, yeah, I, yeah, Marcus, that's a good, that's a good point. What can they do to improve on the Mavic 2 series? You know, right now, I, I don't know, you know, um, the cameras on there, the zoom and the pro cameras are, are fantastic. Um, you know, and I've flown both, I've flown both the zoom and the pro, um, you know, impressed with the video on both impressed with the pictures on both. The zoom feature is fantastic. The, you know, I, I have to say this on the pro, you know, I absolutely jaw, jaw dropped. If you ever get a chance, watch the video I did on the sunset behind my house over the lake. I mean, it was like I got it up in a matter of like six or seven minutes. And because my wife said, you better catch the sunset. It's just fantastic. And I got it up and I had it in 4K and shot in 4K. I don't normally do that. But wow. I mean, it just was was jaw dropping in the pictures that I took. Same here. So, you know, that's that's uh, to me. And I didn't mess around. I mean, all I did was switch it to 4K and got it up in the air. And then I, I pulled the stick back. I normally don't do that. I'll turn around. But because it was so brilliant outside and so nice, I ended up pulling the stick back. So yeah, replaceable lens on the pro. You may be right there, David. I really think that they would do something like that. Um, you know, they did talk about, and they, you know, and that's an issue. Thanks for bringing that up, David. They brought, you know, they, they told us at the time that when I was at the see the bigger picture event, that the zoom and the pro would have interchangeable lens systems um, that you could do it with DJI for a fee. Well, haven't seen that, and it's what it's over six months. I mean, I thought that's that's interesting. They said they would charge you know charge you a fee to do that, and I know some others have done that. And when you do something like that, this is just a disclaimer. You're probably you know if you break a seal or something on that, you know you probably don't have a warning with DJI anymore. For those of you who are worried about your warranty, so um, Ken, thank you. Yes, that that was that was fantastic. Uh, met a super guy Saturday that flies drones in Florida inspecting power lines. Oh, oh, that's great, Robert. Uh, that, that's fantastic. Um, going to kind of wrap things up here for tonight. 
Um, I got some other guests come lined up. I don't have them confirmed yet, so I, but I, I don't want to announce them. But um, you know, these are names that you're definitely going to be uh, going to going to recognize. Um, again, tomorrow night there is no uh, bucket list boys um, drone therapy on coast to coast drones. So uh, you know, we will be back on the 20th at 8:30 p.m. So make sure that you put that on your on your calendar. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to have my next Sunday afternoon rudder talk live. Considering I think Gail, I think was on the first Sunday here in March. So, um, you know, it, I may have one on the last Sunday here in March. Um, you know, I'm working on that. And I'm also working on getting some guests on the Sunday afternoon Rotor Talk Live from overseas. So, you know, stay tuned for that. You know, I, I was so, you know, another one of the interviews that, that, that I have to say was absolutely fantastic was Gail. You learn so much about how drones are used across the world and what a, what a tremendous opportunity it was to learn from Gail. And, you know, and one of the things that I try to do, I'm on Twitter a lot. I know Floyd Motes is out there and I know Lloyd's out there on Twitter. One of the things I like to do is I really like, you know, if I see things that are, you know, talking about drones and doing good things, I use that hashtag drones for good. And I think that's an important thing. I think we need to make, make, get the community aware and everyone aware, you know, of how good drones are. And I think if you remember, Romeo said, I think right now the 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 um the the count is I think drones have saved 240 people. I mean that's crazy off the charts fantastic. I mean these are 240 people that you have to get another day because of a drone. Think about that. I mean that that's just something that you can't really put a price tag on. So we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. Thank you Marcus. I appreciate that. Everybody that was here tonight, um, I know Floyd was here, Lloyd was here, um, Ken Ingram was here, Art was here, Ethan Mitchell, David Ensign, um, um, Jim's Droning, Drone Master, um, Drone Effects with Claude. Um, yes, Ethan, you should get on Twitter. It's absolutely fantastic, I, I, I can tell you. And um, that is in a, in a tip, if you want to have a tip for the week. DJI support is extremely responsive to um, inquiries on Twitter. You know, if you guys aren't on Twitter and you need to get help with a DJI product, and I know other ones are as too. You know, I, I know, um, um, I think I tell is a little better on Facebook as far as, as responsiveness is concerned. Uh, you know, but I do know that DJI is pretty responsive. So definitely, you know, if you want to get some questions answered, definitely, that's definitely the, the route to go. I'm going to wrap things up. Robert, thank you for thank you for showing up tonight. I want to thank again, you know, I can't thank uh, having Romeo on enough. You guys get a chance to if you need to watch that again. I'm probably going to split that up in, into some smaller chunks so you guys can go ahead and watch that. Got some great videos got up. Got an exciting new thing that's going to be happening with the channel. I'll probably be premiering premiering that this weekend, so stay tuned for that. Again, thank you guys so much for showing up. And remember, it's a great day to fly. Take care.